Hello, welcome back. We are going to talk about the spirit of jealousy and how that connects with rage um, and what that spirit does because it wants to come in the back door and with manipulation and control and pressure and actually destroy your life and then come in and be a savior. And so we're just going to talk about what that looks like. It can, it really operates with a um, adultery um, because it has to do with your heart, someone's heart, and whether their heart is fully um, after the Lord first, but then um, really where their treasure is. So um, if you're in a covenant of marriage, then your treasure after the Lord is to be your wife, um, not first your job, um, not even first ministry, but um, the covenant that you've made before the Lord, because that's where he started. Um, you know, when he brought um, the treasure, um, he made the treasure of Eve and brought her to Adam. So let's look at this. We're going to read a few different scriptures, and then I'm going to go. I'm going to watch the time. We're going to see how long we go. This might be a few different videos. Um, but my desire with the Lord's desire, I believe, is really to bring... Um, um, just a, a presence of his love and his grace in the midst of this and for anyone who's been attacked by the spirit in someone else then there's reasons why and God wants um, to get the freedom and the repentance on on that end um, but then also someone who's operating in the spirit and they begin to recognize maybe that is what has gone on in my life then God wants to bring the restoration and that God is always about restoration and healing. And he's the one that can lead, you know, when we're stuck in something or we have a revelation about something, right? If we're just self-deceived, then um, we're just like the Pharisees, right? The blind leading the blind and we don't even realize that we're blind. Um, but when God begins to shine light on something and we see it, then God want, he's always wants to bring the healing. He never then is, you know, there's a lot of damage that that spirit, I mean, that spirit can wreck someone's life. Like um, the adultery and the spirit of jealousy can wreck somebody's life. Um, and, and really um, ruin families, ruin children. And um, God has a restoration plan in every situation. And that's who our God is. He's greater than the devil always. And he wants to take what looks like the biggest, hugest mess, and we think, that's just, this is all my fault. God's like, you did. You did participate with the devil, but it was the enemy's kingdom that really was the source behind all of it. So God wants to bring the freedom, and then he has a way to restore. So, um, and it's his love and his forgiveness that then brings, you know, like when the presence of Jesus came into Zacchaeus, he's like, Oh no, he's like, I mean, it was not like, not oh no. <laughs> it was like, I, I, I want, Jesus is coming into my home. Like, I want to restore, I'm going to restore four times everything that any damage that I ever did to anyone, I'm going to restore four times. So when that spirit, uh, you, when you see like, wow, that's really wrecked people's lives, like really wrecked people's lives. And um, as a as a man, as a woman, as a human being, nobody ever went into a marriage. Nobody ever went into anything and said, "Hey, I want to destroy their life." But the devil knew what he was doing, so the devil was there and knew what he was doing. That's why we have to be wiser than serpents and innocent as a dove. Um, but Zacchaeus had the heart of God in that moment. The presence of God touched him, and he's like, I don't care what it means for me. Like, I, I want to bring about good. Like, no manipulation, no control. It doesn't matter what happens to me in the end. Like, I just want to make, I just want to make it good. And, um, you know, so, um, but, so here's what we're going to look at. So, okay, we're going to start in um, Matthew 5 says, because we're talking about the heart. So this is a heart posture. Um, you have heard that it was said, this is Matthew 5, 27, you have heard that it was said by them of old time, thou shall not commit murder, or commit adultery, excuse me. But I say unto you, that whosoever looks a, on a woman to lust after her commit, has committed adultery with her already in his heart. And if your right eye offends you, pluck it out and cast it from you. For it is profitable for thee that one of your members should perish rather than your whole body should be cast into hell. If your right hands offends you, cut it off. For it is more profitable. So 
Um, and then it, you know, actually I'm gonna just read this whole thing. Cut it off and cast it from you for it's more profitable to be one of your members should perish not, and not that your whole body should be cast into hell. It has been said, they should put away his wife and give her a writing of divorcement. But I say unto you that whosoever shall put away his wife, saving for the cause of fornication, causes her to commit adultery. Whosoever shall marry her that is divorced commits adultery. So, okay, so the Lord is dealing with a heart issue. Now, um, in any of these things, okay, so Matthew 6, verse 19, lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break, break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, near the, nor, and where thieves do not ba break, nor, break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. The light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single, your whole body shall be full of light. But if your eye be evil, your whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in you is darkness, how great is that darkness. No one can serve two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. So take no thought for your life, God says. Um, in Proverbs 23, when you sit to eat with the ruler, consider diligently what is before you. Put a knife to your throat, if you be a man given to appetite. Be not desirous of his dainties, for they are deceitful meat. Labor not to be rich, cease from thine own wisdom. Wilt thou set thine eyes upon that which is not? For riches certainly make themselves wings. They fly away as the evil to eagle towards heaven. Eat thou not the bread of him that has an evil eye, neither desire thou his dainty meat. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Eat and drink, saith he to thee, but his heart is not with thee. The morsel which thou hast eaten, shalt thou vomit up and lose thy sweet words. So he's talking in all three of those passages about your heart and about your eye, where we put our eyes. So um, what we do with our eyes and our ears, our, ma our mouth reveals what's in our heart. But what we receive in from our eyes, where we allow our eyes to go, what we allow our ears to listen to, it affects our heart and eventually comes out in our actions, our words, and um, um, those things get exposed in time. So a spirit of jealousy really, um, that those scriptures are speaking a lot about a spirit of jealousy because the spirit of jealousy has to do with our heart posture and where our heart is really set upon and where our treasure is given to. So, um, like I said, it manifests in spirits of like lust and rage and greed and adultery is um, how it works out in a marriage. Um, but in a relationship with, um, you know, a man or a woman can come after the other, um, you know, the other sex, another person out of a spirit of jealousy and um, that spirit wants to be worshipped. It is a very, very controlling, manipulative spirit, um, but it can look very, very, um, very good. It can look very, very good. And it can do all the right things. But um, there's pressure and there's something that's not right. And the Holy Spirit will expose something's not right. Something's not right. And actually, um, here's one thing that's um, really, really important in this day. This is going to look like a tangent, but it's really important for this. So, because it, this works with the spirit of witchcraft and control manipulation. Now, there are three ways that we test spirits. The Lord says test the spirit. So, it's not a problem with him. If, if a spirit comes and talks to me and I say, Lord, is that you? Um, you tell me to test the spirits. And um, sometimes it's really obvious it's the Lord. He just wants to love us. Um, but, um, but he doesn't, he, sometimes he's wanting to wake us up and um, we think it's love putting us to sleep and that's not the Lord. So there's, there are things, that, and God's okay with us saying, if, with me saying, Lord, you tell me to test the spirit, so I'm testing that. And I, we tested, there's three different areas of test. The area in the, in the area of the spirit of jealousy, adultery, manipulation, control, witchcraft, these types of deception that's going on this earth because someone's self-deception can then come and manipulate, seduce me under that. And I can think that it's God. God's talking to me. 
um, and, and it's not God at all. So, um, but because um, it's very seductive. Now, so here are the three tests on the, in this day. And the third one that I'm gonna talk about is very, very important. Um, so, um, God's peace. Does it witness or is there something in my spirit that's a check? If there's a check, then it says, let the peace of God rule in your heart. Now that word rule in the Greek is umpire. And umpire says in or out. I don't need to know why. The fear of the Lord doesn't need to know why. I say, yes, Lord, <laughs> that's out of bounds. And, and after I begin to obey, that's when I get the revelation because the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So it's the door of wisdom. So when I come in with the fear of the Lord and I say, Lord, whatever you say, that's it for me. Doesn't matter what I want. Doesn't matter what I think. Whatever you say on the umpire of my heart, that's it for me. And, and how, I, how I also test it is the word of God. The word of God brings light. The word of the God is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. So the word of God is going to bear witness. And God will bring multiple scriptures to confirm. He's not just like a one scripture God. He brings a, a multitude of counselors. He brings the Holy Spirit will bring a multitude of counselors. And as much word as I have tucked in my heart, it is much the word can come up. But if I am seeking him and I'm asking him and I'm knocking him and I'm pursuing the word, then God will bring scripture after scripture after scripture. This, the other thing that is the test point on this day is authority, is, is godly authority that is operating under the Spirit of God and the Word of God by the power of the Holy Spirit. So it is very, very important. If you are able to be in a church, we need to be there. I'm just going to say that as a sister, as a mother in the faith, as someone who loves you, that to be safe in this day where there's so much deception running about, we have to be under godly authority. And God will lead us to the right church. It is not man who puts himself. I don't decide where I go to church. The Lord, it is the Lord who plants us where he wants us, the Lord who sets us in the church as he sees fit. So we don't always know why, but he puts us there. And if we're in a godly church and he's calling us to come out, he will bring out, and you're not, and because you want to honor that and you want to serve there, and but God will grab and, and put things in motion to say, nope, I'm calling you over here because I need you under this authority. You know, a whole place can be under a le levels of deception. So there's a lot of things going on right now, but here's the thing. The, the authority will give a word, do this. And if you're able to do this, then it's of God. If you're not able to do that, it's not of God. That's a test point for the spirit of rebellion. So rebellion is tested under authority. This is how it's exposed. And only you and God know whether you honored that word. And if that word was not honored, then there's a wrong spirit involved. And that's a checkpoint. And the Holy Spirit is able to bring that back up. Even if every authority around is saying, this is a great idea, this is, the Holy Spirit is able to say, this daughter, this son, is why you don't have peace. What did King Saul say? Oh, <laughs> welcome back, Samuel. You know, we defeated this, the Lord gave us this victory and we, we you know, killed all the sheets and whatever. And, and Samuel and the Spirit of God and Samuel said, I hear something and it's the bleeding of, you know, there was not. And he's like, we did like 98%. We just like, you know, we kept a few of the choice ones. We wanted to sacrifice to God, you know, like we were, we were doing good, Samuel. And we wanted to, you know, keep the king and stuff so that I had a little, you know, like pat on my back, you know, my... A little like pride boost during my you know throne room or whatever but so and he said no actually that's rebellion so um, when the Word of God is given and the authority gives a word and that's to honor so this is for all of us right this is a test point of am I really do I really reverence and honor the authority of God, the extent that I honor God's authority is the extent that I honor the Lord. Okay, so I'm already at 15 minutes. <laughs> okay. All right, Lord, we're going to take cut and we're going to go to video two right after this. All right, so if you're in, we're in. We're talking about um, exposing the spirit of jealousy, manipulation, control, how to recover from it, how to expose it, how to recognize it, and how to get back what the devil has stolen. And God is the only one that can do that. God is the only one that can bring true repentance. He is the only one that can do that. And that is always his goal no matter even if you are the one and you're like man and you're like boom like conviction comes and you're like um yeah all right that thing destroyed people's lives 
destroy, maybe it destroyed families' lives, destroyed children's lives. Maybe it destroyed someone's life and ripped their life apart and their finances and their life and their years. And you're like, and that actually, and I'm left fat and sassy and happy. Um, but that thing in me destroyed people's lives. God is able to bring healing, hope, reconciliation, actually in a place. And, he's, and, may, and whatever then he calls you to do in that place, he's a, he's a generous God. But Zacchaeus, it was, it was, it was like, I, I wanna, I just wanna make it, I just wanna give back, you know, like my my actions, the the, the way that I manipulated that something in me affected that person and it ripped their life apart, and I wanna do something to love. Love makes things right. Love um, brings restoration, but only God is able to bring that. But it's out of a heart of love. It's never manipulative. All right, so we're gonna cut and we're gonna go to video two.